Welcome back for another OG Show Live. Mr. Randall, how you doing? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real Down. Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing for News. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to, once again, the Bass Kayak Appears. Oh, brother! This is the final cast. Another segment of uh, Chasing the Tide, your saltwater connection on the pallet. Welcome back, back, everyone. Another episode of Feather and Fur. Your host, Brad. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal. Hey, welcome back to Off the Water. Happy This is you here with Adventures of Outdoor Woman Podcast. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Rusty Hook Kayak Fishing Podcast. We're brought to you by Pelican Built Tough. For all situations, go to pelican.com. Eastport Marina on the beautiful shores of Dale Hollow Lake. For all your lodging, kayaking, go to eastport.info. Yak Gadget. For all your fine kayak fishing accessory needs, go to yakgadget.com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Real Down. I ain't gonna lie, that startled me right there, Dano. Uh, welcome back to the real down, everybody. I'm already thrown off. Dan just like shot a look and I stared deep into my soul and I just wasn't ready for it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, you're good. Uh, but yeah, well, welcome back everybody. Uh, a little bit of a different show this week. We had, uh, some last minute cancellations that shit just tends to happen mostly to us. And, uh, we scrambled, we got some guests and we're just kind of, kind of wing it this week. So welcome to after hours or whatever else this turns into. Um, be prepared for unfilteredness for me. Uh, it's kind of per usual though. So nothing new there. I usually just drop the F bomb a few more times than normal. Um, but yeah, what about you, Dan? What's been up this week, brother? None. My, my kid did the, uh, the hockey. He started the six to eight year old travel team, hockey team, Birmingham bulls tonight. So it was like practice, regular practice. And then that practice. So yeah. It, it's it's all hockey here at the Perry House, my dude. Yeah, you're. I feel like your fishing career is going to start to slow down as he gets yeah. older and better at it. I mean, I, I think your son's already a beast. You've showed us the videos of your son like plowing over kids. It's it's going to take over his life. Your pocketbook, you know. Yeah, it'll be all right. No, nah, it'll be cool. He'll love it. What other sport do you get to whip people's ass and get away with it? Yeah, hey, he loves it, man. He loves running to people, but. This weekend, I'm trying to get you to come fishing with me down at yeah. a, a little secret pond. Some people I some people I know have a little pond and it's stocked, and they have too many fish, and they need to get them out. So me and Jimmy and the kid might be doing some fishing this weekend. Yeah, I'm uh I'm doing my best to make it. I'm hoping I uh, I can make that happen. It, I think it'd be fun. I know my daughter would enjoy. I mean, hell, I know I'd enjoy it. I just love catching fish, but uh, I think I could make some controversial content out of it too. Well, oh, keeping kind of, bass. Yeah, eating them. Well, I mean, I'm gonna, it's I'm gonna do that whole uh, not smallmouth sandwich, but you know, like spotted bass sandwich or something like that. Well, they these are actually like in a pond. They and they have it's an eight acre, eight to ten acre pond, and they need to get some out because there's too many and they won't get big enough. So it's it's like the only time in my mind I would keep a bass and eat them. So yeah, no, I, I mean I agree. Like. There's definitely better tasting fish, but it's part of the, um, ah, damn it. I can't think of the word conservation of it. Like for a lot of people don't understand it. I mean, a lot of the times too many of the same size class fish actually will affect the growth cycle and spawn cycles and you won't get the big fish. That's why a lot of like neighborhood ponds usually suck. Like every now and then you find the one that's got a few big ones in it, but most of them just suck. You'll catch 5 million, 12 inches, you know? That's it. But yeah, looking forward to that. I hope I can come. I, I think it'll be a great time. But uh, we'll start. I will. We'll let our first guest come in real quick. Uh, nobody probably knows who he is, but what's up? It's Brad Hurla, boss. All right, it's been great. Goodbye, Brad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking about fish tacos. Yeah, that's probably what would happen. I was trying to think. I was like, I just don't think I want to do fried golden crispies. I think I'd do some tacos. Tacos and fresh salsa. Mmm. <sighs> What have you been doing? You've been hunting any yet? I know you hunt for just about everything that comes in season. Teal opened up uh, first through the ninth in Wisconsin here. I mean, it was definitely an ex- it was a real exciting teal. Um, I had off that Thursday and I had to cancel my day of vacation because work took over. So I missed the opener. Uh, we headed over to the Mississippi River on the way up. I hit something with my trailer, took out a tire and the hub. So it was real good. Yeah, it was real good. Um, 
Mississippi River was fun. Did a ton of work on the backwaters, and I found probably about a thousand wood ducks with not a single teal. That figures. So that was that started my hunting season. Um, yeah, I wrapped up my tournament season a little bit early to switch gears to hunting. So I actually I did qualify for our state championship, but I skipped out on it because it wound up being this past weekend and without having any time to pre-fish with already having ducks on my mind, I just said, yeah, I'll save the money. Yeah. For anybody that doesn't know, Brad hosts, uh, our, one of our segments on uh, the paddle and fin network, uh, feather and fur, and he doesn't fish like hunting and shooting shit his life and his dog. He has the coolest dog in the world, but, uh, she's a bearded little, she's a bearded little girl. She's not down here tonight. I actually had a pretty Sad. good tournament season this year, though. You like, did. For not fishing. I had a pretty good tournament season. He's been cashing tons of checks and taking over the. You were doing a, like afternoon tournaments, weren't you? A lot uh, of those. A, week, a weeknight league on on my local on my local lake chain here, in Madison. So, I did pretty good. And what I have three firsts, a second, three thirds, and a fourth for my top eight. Where did you end up, Angler? Do y'all have AOI or? We did. I wasn't able to. I was in the Mississippi for their Angler of the Year, and I did not know it was a double points event. So I got bumped from first to fourth. Ain't that some shit? Yep. So it's not that you won in our hearts, man. It's Your not, Angler of the Year. It, it kind of was disappointing. Um, the person who won it, he had one bad tournament that it bumped out. Even if it was a single point event, and I would have showed up, I had no possible way to beat him. Even if he caught a single fish, I couldn't have beat him. He had just beat me. Mm. I only beat him once throughout the year. Um, so he won it, and we only pay top the top place for angler year. So really, it didn't matter after that point. But yeah. it would have been nice to finish second rather than forward. I mean, well, because... I mean, but you can hang your hat on a kick-ass year, though. So that doesn't Oh, really for matter. sure. For sure. Those three first place, like, really. Because that, that, this is my first year I've ever took a first. This is the first year I ever won anything, too. And I remember calling Schiller and being like, I fucking won! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's how I felt, man. This year, I didn't take this year too seriously. In the last two events I got in, I cashed a check. And that was just, like, kind of, like, I don't want to say it inflates your ego. It just, like, helps your confidence. Like, oh, maybe I do know what the hell I'm doing occasionally. Like, I I'm kind of feel like Dan, because Dan wins a lot. And he, yeah, Dan, he the takes money. and Finn Crew's been on a roll this season, to be honest. You, yeah. Dan, myself, Dustin's done good. Dustin yeah. always does Dustin, good. Yeah, he's so <laughs> Dustin's good. just good. <laughs> <laughs> if he fished for bass, he would be like, like top five in the country. I, I so, said yeah. it when he was on yeah. with us one time, and I 100% would put my money where my mouth is on it. If he took national tournament trails serious and stopped the saltwater, a lot of these top name folks would be in trouble because the dude can put it together everywhere he's freaking good but uh we're we're glad to have you on we're just gonna kind of goof off and talk but dan i'm gonna let you uh introduce the guy that you brought on and then i'll introduce the other guy yeah here next is mark edwards he's been on a bunch of times the goat whisperer of <laughs> of uh middle of nowhere <laughs> west virginia how you doing man i'm doing good we we'll appreciate and, you and, coming and, on you, yeah you just won uh what west virginia it was Mountain State Kayak Anglers uh, Championship. There you go. It was a two-day tournament, and uh, it's actually the only time all year I've slept in my own bed. So yeah, you don't get really that good. pleasure for tournament fishing too often. No, like like my home waters here, man. Like we fish a new river. Like I'm ten minutes away, but the where I my access point is on the other side of the river, and it's an hour drive. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. You know, I, but, I've tried it's, doing it's awesome fishing. Uh, Pickwick tournaments that way. You know, it's 45 minutes away, so I'm like, I'll just sleep at my house. If I do that, I won't get up on time. Like, Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's why I usually sleep at the ramp. Yeah. Because I'm bad, I'm lazy. Real bad lazy. But, uh, you know, I, I say that, and this year I took it a lot less serious. Like, I was one of the first to the ramp at one of the days, and I was last on the water by 15 minutes because I just talked to everybody, didn't get any of my shit out of my truck. <laughs> Went up to the outhouse, used the bathroom, came back, putted it around, and then boom, I had a limit in like 15 minutes. I was like, what is happening? Like, this isn't this isn't how this goes for me. And then I got second in it. And I was like, so that's the key. Don't give a fuck. I'm going to like <laughs> brand it. But uh, the, the thing about this two-day tournament was uh, we had three waters we had to choose from, right? So we couldn't fish the same one twice. So we had Bluestone Lake, that's New cool. River. And the Greenbrier River. Oh, that is cool. And uh, so the first day I chose the lake because my 
peen partner, we got three clubs in the state, and I fish all three of them. And uh, this one, I, I wasn't in the angler year running because I've only fished two other tournaments in this club, just because they were so far. And plus, I fish every weekend, so just you don't want to get burnt out. You know what I'm saying? So oh, I yeah. burned myself out last year, sort of. Just because I think I got six weekends in a row now. I got tournaments. And, you know, three or four more, you know, I think it's four more weeks, and I'll, I'll be at the uh, pick week at the bass bass one. Yeah, and I got a real good shot of winning an angler year in that. So, I second remember, right now. But I'm trying to decide if I'm uh, going to jump down in that. I know Drew's been asking me if I was coming. Or, <laughs> aren't you in that house too, right? Are you, uh, are you staying with Greg no. and them? I can He He, like, added, like, 50 people in that group chat. So I have no clue who all is in that. Because he was talking about his possibility of winning angler of the year, your possibility of winning angler of the year, and something like that, and throwing a banger and all sorts of stuff. I don't know, but maybe. If, if, if you do, you should try to get that same house. It was legit. The one we did? Yeah. I yeah. Like that place. I would, like, I almost kind of want to just have a couple of people and go find that house instead of a house full of people way better than me because uh, it'll <laughs> not mess with my mentalness. Mentalness? Mental status? I hadn't even started drinking yet. Jesus. I'm well, looking uh, forward to it. I really am. I mean, uh, I think it can be great. We went and pre-fished it. Actually, the guy I'm about to bring in here, we went and pre-fished it this weekend and confirmed some information. So I think it's going to fall in line perfectly time-wise for some yeah. like fall pattern because it's definitely not there yet. Um, which, I mean, even the f big fishing report said it wasn't, but we tried to prove that wrong and failed miserably. But uh, without further ado, I'll bring him in here. Uh, good buddy of mine, uh, Mr. Gerard Johnson. Hey, what's Tennessee going on? Anglers, uh, club man. director, Tennessee Hammer, teammate with Music City. His name's actually Garrett. I'm totally kidding about Gerard. <laughs> yeah. uh, but everybody, is, everybody goes with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's up, dude? Gerard, uh, Jared, uh, Garland is my favorite Garland, one. I got, yeah. I got Garland. Carrot one time, too, at a at a restaurant. Why carrot? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess he thought I said my name was Carrot. <laughs> and he was like super serious when he uh, called my name up. I like, oh, I would have okay. ran with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we appreciate you having you on, man. Uh, I know we haven't had you on before, so give us a quick uh, who you are, how you got into kayak fishing. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I'm Garrett. Uh, I started kayak fishing probably eight nine years ago uh honestly i didn't really get that much into fishing until i was in college and i wish i would have like done it more throughout my life uh but started really heavy in college and then uh, after that after i graduated that's when i really started getting on into tournaments and stuff uh and then the year after my first year of tournament fishing the director that out from the club that i was working with he stepped down and asked me to take it over. So ever since then, that was three, four years ago, I took over the Central Tennessee Cock Angler Group. And I hear nothing but bad things about it. They're actually talking about voting him out of that position because <laughs> oh, it's yeah. just bullshit. No, I'm totally terrible. Kidding. His guys, his guys, are lo like all their guys are loyal as shit. Like they really believe in the bullshit he's feeding them. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, man, Tennessee, y'all really have it but together better than any other state in the country like even the alabama tournament directors like we're all talking and trying to you know like, be more we like see, you. yeah we see how well y'all do it like we're trying to do that too and come together as a group yeah we got a pretty good system established here and it's i mean it's been around for i don't know like nine or ten years or so i, I mean I cast remember. has been around for a hot minute yeah and uh, for anybody that doesn't know, that's like a collaboration of the clubs that basically like y'all share all the same rule sets and yeah. that's how the state championships held and all that shit. It's really cool. Yeah. We got uh, 11 different clubs in that set of clubs. That's all, all comes together and use the same rule sets and everything. It's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, think, uh, like, in total, there's probably like four or five hundred kayak anglers in the state if you count up all those clubs. Yeah, and you know, like 
fifty percent of the hammers in the country are fishing in those clubs. So, if you really want to test your brass and think you're somebody, go fish with those clubs because they will fucking humble you quickly. (laughs) And then you got, and I I don't mean this in any like, like no name, like Garrett. You you're a really good angler, but you know we haven't heard your name on the national scene. But so like if you were coming into Tennessee, like I'm gonna go try some other clubs, Garrett. Kazmierski, they'll still kick your ass, and like Adam Riser still goofs off in these clubs. Like, yeah, that's why I don't fish at the Tennessee clubs. I fished with TVKA one time, finished middle of the pack, called that a win. And it's like I think I finished above Josh Stewart and was like, "Woo, I'm out!" Like, <laughs> yeah, I did that I once this year too, and I was like, "Yes." <laughs> I fished one didn't. Tennessee event ever, and I won. So. I'm Damn. one for one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bring it more to the party. The street. It was it was lucky. <laughs> yeah. What Tennessee event did you fish? TVK. Was it? Yeah. Gunnersville this year. Well, yeah. Garrett actually just won one. Um, here, I'm going to bring a couple more assholes in. Oh, Lord. Hey! <laughs> my, favorite, <laughs> my favorite two testicles. What's going on, guys? <laughs> is, that a, is that a Browns jersey? It is. Talk the color of the soul. Oh my lord! Oh, no, that's huh? black. That's oh. black as black. This is just brown. <laughs> this is the color of Taco Bell. No, it's the um, color of after Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. <laughs> well, we're just goofing off, guys, and uh, introducing a couple new guests. And but for anybody that's listening and doesn't see it on YouTube, we've got with us now Mr. Brad Hicks and Mrs. Matt Souders, the most oh, lovely so. couple in Paddle and Finn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> Well, we appreciate y'all coming on. We're going to get to some bullshit, but uh, we were just talking about different some of the different clubs and how everybody's been doing. And uh, what I was getting at, though, Garrett, you just won a TVKA tournament uh, on Chick for the Tennessee Bass Nation, or no, the TVKA one was a solo event. Yeah, on it's Chick. Like a double dip. And then um, my man was whipping that ass in the Tennessee Bass Nation tournament on day one. And then what happened on day two? Man, I just didn't take advantage of my opportunities. And, also, uh, as we discussed it this weekend, it was it was that, and my man refuses to put down the frog if he's had a bite on the frog, so he just died by the frog. <laughs> yeah, I, I like can't it. I can't resist it. Yeah, I got some if you want some. I mean, I'm still waiting on my box, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's yeah. I see it. I'm looking at it right now. I just haven't. I keep forgetting to go to the post office. I have to go though. Like either tomorrow or thursday because i have to send back a saddle i ordered because i got too big of a size and it doesn't fit so i might as well just knock like two a, birds out with what, one like stone. a tree saddle yeah i got a phantom uh saddle nice. and i got I the xl so bad. and i was like oh yeah this will okay because what what's your this is getting way out of like what normal. the hell is a tree saddle so it's a new <laughs> way of hunting instead of a tree stand you you basically hang from the tree like a lineman would on a power yeah. pole it's the same concept and you can climb, but see other, like a tree stand, I can climb any tree as long as it's like, I think it's thicker than, I don't know. I think it was like eight inches. You can go up the tree, no matter limbs or anything. You just go up it. It's great. Yeah. It's got all sorts of like real lineman, uh, parts to it, like ropemen and bridges and stuff. So you've got all sorts of fail safes. You can rappel down the tree. Yeah. It's way cooler. Like your range of motion. So like, you can hang from the tree and be comfortable. And then you can take your shot this way. You can move 270 degrees around your back and make a shot, or you can put your harness over and you can spin around and you can get to your weak side. It's pretty cool. It, you know, you do any of that shit in a tree stand, you're going to fall out. Like, yeah, die. Matt, Matt's favorite yeah. thing to say, die. You're going <laughs> to die. It's going to happen. I said it in our show. We just recorded. I could have died. Uh, what were you going to ask though? Why am I returning it? Well, you said it's uh, XL is too big, and the XL was the one I was looking at for extra room. Like, how much bigger is it than the? So standard? I'm a th- I'm a 38 waist because I got them birth and hips. Same here. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, shut up. Fuck uh, you, but I'm, jeans. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a 38 waist. So on their website it says, you know, the Phantom regular Phantom's like a a 24 or something, all the way up to a 38, and then the 38 or the Phantom XL is a 38 plus. So I was like, well, hey. I'm going to get fatter. It's just how it is. So I'll just get the third. Dude, I got that. Put it on. I, I got it as tight as I could. No. Like, it didn't even I just stay. buy it then. It I just thought it would just, all the way you, down. Uh, some people said if you got the, if it was too big, it just could make it more comfortable because you had, like, more room in it. 
which doesn't make sense because I feel like it's just more room for me slipping right out the bottom of that bitch and going yep. straight down in the ground. But yeah, like it, I couldn't even tighten it on my waist. So, which is cool though. It's a great company. Like I met, emailed them out. They're like, yeah, just send it back and we'll send you another one. I was like, all right, cool. Thanks. Easy. So, Shameless plug for Tethered. Yep. I, I got their tree, their steps, the Skeletors. Love them. Cheap. Great. Awesome. So, so you, you use the steps every time or do you, or you use them? things on your feet Spikes. uh yeah yes, so but... i use the steps for one reason one reason only uh you can't cause any damage to the trees in ohio on public land and my luck the first time i do it i'll have a pair of green pants come up to me and give me a fine and the fine's like 280 bucks so i'm mm. not doing that i'll just use steps and there's some guys who do it's called the one step single uh, concept step method. single step method yeah and they'll take one tree step and go up and then move it I ain't yeah. doing that. And then there's guys who repel down. I'm not doing that either. I, I, yeah, no. No, I'll repel. They got some really cool tools for repelling now that like a jackass can use it and not fall out of the tree. Like the concept is the faster you or the harder you squeeze down, the faster you go. If you don't want to die, you just bump it. But I know yes. I'm going to be trying to like SWAT team my way off and fast rope out of the tree, you know, kick so, off. I can, I can tell you in the Marine Sam Corps, Fisher the reason... Style. Yeah. The reason my 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 back's all screwed up is because I fell out of a when I was rappelling I fell out of a, a C night helicopter about twenty feet on my back. Now, granted, that was just me holding on to a rope with no safety at all, and just you're just falling at a controlled speed. Uh, so I know it's a lot safer. Still ain't gonna do it just because. Well, the brain, I'll tell you what: when yeah. I fall and land yeah. flat on my back. Before I call someone to come get me out of the woods, I'm going to call you first and be like, I understand now. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, it sucks. Like the only thing, surprisingly, the only thing that saved me was my plate carrier because it took all the brunt. I broke a rear plate, which the Marine Corps charged me $900 for. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I know. It's stupid. That plate, was. It's, it's stupid. It's so yeah. dumb. But whatever. You fell out of our bullshit aircraft and it's your fucking fault. Pay us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's what, and it was my fault. I let go of the rope because I'm an idiot. Uh, gust of wind oh, came. Oh, I'm going and it too fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, a gust of wind came and picked it up, and I was like, "Oh no, this is weird." And instead of just holding on the rope tighter, I was like, "Ah," and I just, yeah. And then I had to crawl to a position and sit in a security on my stomach for 45 minutes, all while I'm crying in my brain, like I'm just, I'm dead. I'm in hell. He's the reason Sucks. they have safety briefings. He's they've probably got it on video. This is what you don't do, fellas. Oh no, I was in every safety brief. Like they mentioned me every single time. Don't let go of the rope if piece if Gus comes up, just grab on tighter. Or you'll be like Sergeant Souders. And I was like, Yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Glad I could help Gus. Yep. Pretty much what it was. So but anyway. Example. Gosh, we get you getting rabbit holes on this show just as bad as we do. Well, on this, like, we're just all goofing off. We had last minute cancellations, so we figured we'd go kind of after hours ish and just hang out and talk about whatever came up. Um, cool. I figured we'd we'd hit some odd subjects. We wanted to pick at Garrett about that's the second time this year Garrett has been beating the shit out of everybody and then shot himself in the foot. He it's and I'm not picking like we talk we me and him laugh about it together all the time because like. At the Paddle and Finn event on Del Hollow, he was he whipped everybody's ass on day one. And then you blanked on day two, didn't you? Skunked it. Yeah. <laughs> like he yeah, texted me during the day. Though. Well, kind of. It was half broken. Me and Susie, like... I mean, he yeah. said while it worked, he said, oh, it's never worked this good. And then it blew up like the week <laughs> after that. <laughs> he texted me. was like, yeah, it died. Oh, look, a dog. <laughs> oh, it's oh, a puppy. Man. Oh, that's a cute doggy. God, Shall we're so I? random. Yep. But uh no, good times. I can't wait for the Del Hollow event next year because the timing. I'm so sad. Oh, it's gonna yeah. be so much better. I'm so, it's gonna oh, be fun. God. I'm so Gary, fun. are y'all gonna try and do that with us again? Why would the timing uh, be better? Yeah. I'm We're down. going later in the month than we ever have. Oh, okay. Because yes. we seem to always miss it. Yeah, I'm about it's to say it's December. always hmm? Is it the December? last couple years. No, it's March or April. Fuck, I don't April. know. I should know this. It's the end of third April. Week, third April. Week of April. Third week oh, of April. I think Brad's right. Something. Yeah. Good job. That's um, right, Paddle and Finn guys. Be on top of your shit. I'll tell Brian <laughs> y'all are doing great. But anyway, you think you're gonna do that one with us again, Garrett? As far as like club thing? Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to put that on our schedule for uh, for next year. We're gonna be setting our schedule here in the next month or so. 
Listen uh, to that. All you club directories that listen to this show all over the rest of the country, <laughs> they are doing their shit now. You should be too. Yeah. Get you it over get with. There. The Ohio trails are still like running going. Yeah, they're yeah. still running well, until November. Well, yeah. I mean, well, you know, our season to get to start a lot earlier than y'all's do though. Like Yeah. Yeah, Which, if so in Tennessee, I mean, they fish all through the winter because they're fucking. Yeah, we're going to start our season in December with that uh, that other one on Dale Hollow, the Tennessee Bass Nation. Yeah, so, yeah. I've heard Dale Hollow is money in December. Oh, that's what I've heard, heard they, too. Kaz, Steve Kazmierski and Adam Riser said that if you're not fishing it in the cold weather, you you're not fishing it at the right time of the year. When we had both yeah. of them on, when they like one toed an event, like that's when they figure they're fishing out out there is when it's frigid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you kind of get the lake to yourself. Well, not really, because there's still a lot of like shiner fishermen and stuff mm-hmm. out there. And uh... that's not real fishing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but at least at least people aren't throwing like four ounce a rigs at your face from a boat in your kayak because there's an MLF event going on. Yeah. yeah, and all those assholes think they've got a chance, and like none of them had a clue. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we talked to one guy at the boat ramp that was like fifth place or something. Yeah, he was in fifth or sixth. Did he you tell like him that all you were doing bag. was throwing a jig? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're all struggling. Brad's like, I'm going to throw a jig on deep points or some bullshit. Shows up, hits the water, fucking catches fish doing it. Like, it wasn't even it wasn't even deep points. Like, I was with him, and I refused to throw a jig. I got on a little chatter rate bite, and then he just kept catching fish. I was like, screw it. So I started throwing a jig just on rock walls. Dude, catching fish left and right. It's like this Dude, is stupid. I don't want to do this. I want to crankbait I've, fish or jerkbait fish. I've never we, personally paid for like, a guide, but I'm doing what? it this year. I'm gonna pay Adam Riser, and we're gonna. I'm gonna like book him through the winter, and like <laughs> you're gonna teach me how to not suck here because that lake is great. It's beautiful, and I fucking hate it because I can't ever catch fish on it. <laughs> and I talked Honestly, to Garrett, and Garrett's like, "You just go here and you do this," and I did it. And I didn't catch anything. And then he won the first day doing the same shit. Like <laughs> he gave me the stuff to do it, and I still didn't do it. Like, That's funny. Uh, dude, I'm throwing an A rig next year. I'm just, I'm gonna force myself to do it. I caught fish on an A rig all year this year. I caught them in the dead heat of the summer on school and bass when nobody's throwing A rigs. I'm taking an A rig next year, and I'm going. I don't care if it's Walters or smallmouth. I'm catching something. <laughs> if, if, if I, I got a crappie I'm, bite. I yeah. a, I'm going to bring my crappie stuff next year. I got a solid crappie bite. We'll be cooking fish dinner. I'm just getting grown. <laughs> there you go. You can get some walleye out there. <laughs> yeah. Too. Dan, This the next time Dan comes with us, Dan's not allowed to take it serious. Dan just has to relax because he was in tournament mode when he came. He was like in bed first, like, I'm going to go fuck y'all up. And we were like, that's cool. I'm going to get hammered until like 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I would have rather a drink. In thermal. Well, there, yeah, that was this year. That was fun over the back porch of one of the cabins with thermal optics and high powered rifles. We didn't shoot anything, but we sure thought about it. <laughs> I went in doubt, asked for forgiveness later. That's yeah, right. It's fine. Well, that's like we were talking about like the pigs coming up and then we had heard turkeys and we were all just standing on the back porch. And then her little boss was like, you want me to go get my thermals? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Go get your thermals. If there's something walking across, we're going to shoot it. <laughs> it's if it's a turkey, just bring a 22. Dude, oh, the shoot next in the morning, face. Brad, I don't know, remember if you were, I don't know if you were working yet or you were out there with us. We were all standing on the back deck and we heard a turkey calling. So I just YouTubed turkey calls and I set it on the deck and a turkey popped up. Like it was like 88 yards from us. <laughs> and we were all sitting there and uh, Jay Randall was with us. And I was like, I think something bad's going to happen if he turns towards us. And uh, he finally, because we were like, like, I think Jay was like, Brad's gun in his room. <laughs> and, uh, but it turned and went back down the hill and we left it alone. But That's dude, funny. I'm I'm bringing my bow next year. I'm going to say I've got some, I'm, I'm just doing, so I'm, I'm going to try to come down for the whole week. So there's going to be a day because I know dudes go down there. The first, the two years ago, me and John came down and we we're pulling up and these guys had four turkeys on the back of their truck. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to turkey hunt. And I just didn't do it. So next year, I'm just gonna bring my bow, and I'm if just gonna we, do the same thing. We're getting the we're getting the big cabin this year, and there's houses right there. If we were at the cabins we were at this year, I would just go saddle and or not saddle. We're turkey hunting, but like just basically go out in your pajamas out of the back porch because I mean you could shoot them with a bow from the distance we were at. Or I know I could. 
Well, then I'll just do that. I'll just go over there. Like, well, I'll just go over one morning. There'll be a wedding like party staying in there. They're going to walk out the back door and they're just going to see him in full turkey gear against the tree. That's funny. <laughs> Screw it. I'll give him, I'll, I'll just, I'll prepare it there. Like, I'll be that weird guy in the back of all the footage, like in camo, just like walking out with it. Like, there's wedding photos and there's a guy walking with a bird slung over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't be invited back anymore. That's okay. It's time for a change. At least we'll have turkey. So, you know, <laughs> it's hey. time for a change. We have peaked. It's folks. not paddle and fin is going down. <laughs> no, I was going to say Eastport Marina. I love that place. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Go. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to them. They, they take care of us. They sponsor the show and they take care of our, we're very annoying as a group. I am sure, <laughs> but they love us. So that's what matters. Mark, have you if you joined that event before? If you came out and because I know we had a bunch of West Virginia guys come out with uh, John Rapp every year. Yeah, I mean I'm, I'm pretty busy. Once March, well, the bass had me really busy this spring. I think we had like four events by May or into April or something. Yeah. Well, if you can Plus, work it into your schedule, I think because like y'all said, third week of April, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. If you Should can swing be. it in, it's a good time, man. We we get their so big fun. venue and yeah. there's food and live shows and lots Wait, of. Is there going to be a wedding at like the weekend we're there? Oh, I'd, I'd highly doubt it. I was totally. Oh, kidding. oh, oh. Well, why'd you say? No, I mean, now, now if it's completely it is, open again. <laughs> if it is, we. Should, I'm going to message Richard. If there is one, I will bring a nice, like attire, and try to get in on that because wedding food's the shit. Like people pay Dude, big money for catering. So like my, my wedding bachelorette party. I'm married. I can't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Also, also married. Speaking of married. I think I'm all of whipped, us are married. So Except for I've got to go. I'm getting oh, whipped. I... All right. <laughs> bye. Bye. All right, Have a fun. Bye everybody. The office tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, the tomorrow or Thursday. I've got to go get fitted for a tux tomorrow. Oh, so yeah. Oh, I don't speaking do of weddings. I think so. Yeah, I know. It's not mine. I've, I'm, I, yeah, that's long gone. The happiness is dead too. I'm just kidding, babe. I love you. All right. See ya. <laughs> so I, I, I know I asked clipped. you, I asked you this before, Mark, but do you know what, what trails you're going to fish next year? Nah, not really. Probably, probably bass. No. I would really like to see. I'm, I, I like the motor deal. I would fish some Hobies if, well, motors, but. Which I don't see that. I mean, eventually they'd probably change it because I think they'll like run out of. I I don't even know it'd be marketing room, but and I get why they don't. I mean, because they play to their brand, which yeah, 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 and then they're around, filling you know, up, so you can't blame them. You know what I'm exactly. saying? They're getting people to show up, so yeah. I, I've I've spoke with uh I, I've you know had the pleasure of having lunch with uh oh fuck what's his name AJ AJ I just drew a blank. I also said Steve Owens, like Steve O runs it, but uh, he runs and, like twenty different things. I know he's part of everything. <laughs> I tried to get AJ to get him to run Hobie, and he was like, "Yep, maybe <laughs> he's on the list." <laughs> but uh, uh, we talked, and I was like, "Man, where do you go from here?" You know, congrats on selling tournaments out. What do you do now? He's like, "I don't know." He was like, "Every idea I've came up with, you know, it's got like a dead end to it. Like, well, that won't work. That'll take from this and." So it, I, I think it'll be cool to see what they do in the next couple of years. Cause like you've seen a lot of the other trails, I mean, local and national change things. Um, got a little bit more information on Bassmaster. So the VP is who took over the kayak side, but he is hiring someone specifically in the kayak industry to run it. So that's going to be better for us. And that's the whole reason they're doing this is they're, trying to put a voice in a person that is actually in the kayak world. Therefore the interest is in the kayak world to help make Bassmaster better for the kayak side. So like that, that'll be a change. And I think we'll see some more rule changes with them. If they, somebody told me they've already had a rule change, but me and Garrett were talking about it. He didn't see it. I haven't looked. I'd probably need to, but um, just to make it a little more kayak friendly, but Garrett, same question for you. You fish a little bit of everything. Uh, national trail wise, do you have any? Have, I mean, I know none of this, the schedules are out, but do you have any plans next year? Like who you're wanting to focus on or anything for next year? I mean, honestly, I'll probably stick to most of the Tennessee stuff just because it's easier to get to. But 
if it comes close to me, I'll probably fish it. Like if any of the Hobie ones or the uh, bass ones, the, the two that I mainly will focus on. Uh, we fished the KBF uh, earlier in the year. And yeah, I'll, I'll fish the KBF if it comes comes close. Yeah, we we sucked in that one. We uh, <sighs> we didn't learn how to catch fish Same on a story, frog until man. the frog bite was over. But <laughs> yeah. we we definitely. I think we, KBF announced their schedule there the other day. Part of it. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. yeah. I it's still like didn't a, listen to that part. I keep forgetting. It's like the same place in Florida. I think they fished Murray, Grand Lake, with another lake next to it. Uh, yeah. The champ. The championship's going to be up on Wheeler. So oh, awesome. Here? Yeah. Oh, buddy, I got to get in on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. I figured he would do Wheeler or Gunnersville because now he's living in Huntsville. Yeah. But I don't think you'll see in October. I don't think you'll, I think you'll see a local, if the, our local guys will fish it, because most of our local guys fucking hate KBF. So they may not fish, but chance to win big money on Wheeler is always a, because everybody hates Wheeler now. But Wheeler was legendary back in the day. And then after they sprayed it, it's went downhill. But, the local guys will tell you that it's coming back. You know, even uh, Randall uh, Wallace, one of the guys that uh, we were supposed to have on tonight. Uh, I know that after day, they did like a weird two day tournament after day one, he texted them and was like, I'm, I vote. We never vote this lake in for the classic ever again. And then he turned around and uh, all but won the event the next day. So it's. I, I finished it in the fall 2008 for a uh, BFL wild card. That's so fish bugs. Pre them spraying it. Yeah, I think yeah. They sprayed yeah, it the, 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 the Cater Flats was that's all you ever heard was the Cater Flats, the Cater Flats. Yeah, Iconelli, KVD, uh, all those guys making history on the Decatur Flats when it was all grassy and pretty. Talk, talk, or hear you. Yeah. Talk, yeah. Talk, hero. Yep. Yeah. And then a uh, West Virginia guy, remember when he said Kevin who? Uh, what was his name? Jeremy so Stark. I, he won a Bass I Master met League him series. at Waffle House here last year. I can't think of, I, like I couldn't think of his name, but we got talking fishing and he showed me that because his tag on his truck says Kevin Who. And uh really? yeah. <laughs> like dudes, dudes still holding on to that. Which do it. Like <laughs> but, Yeah, see I met him uh maybe two thousand seven at a uh shoot. We we were in a BFLs and like we never fished Lake Jordan. And they had some kind of like a uh, warriors on a water or something. And it was where the pro anglers would take out, you know, veterans or whatever. So me and my buddy went up there just to watch the tournament and try to figure out the lake. And uh, we met Jeremy up there. And then like my local boat dealer one year gave him, you know, that's where he got his boat from. But I, I only talked to him a couple of times. And then I don't know why he quit. I, don't, I mean, he won two elite series. I mean, he's decent, you know. Well, I mean, because fishing, pro fishing's still expensive. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 your whole life. You got to make your whole life. You've got to be a a silver. <laughs> a, you have to be good, obviously, but you have to be a silver tongue with your sponsors and very yes. stern to make it where you can. I mean, even compete. I mean, especially in today's world, like. I still don't think there's too many anglers getting super rich doing this. And Garrett, Garrett, and J Dan are walking like textbooks on pro anglers um so they can speak to the guys that can and you know like really are making it and the guys that are like you know the guys you don't hear on the elite series as much who are probably coming a lot more out of pocket than others but uh some of these guys talk about like it's 200 bucks to get the boat off the trailer um i know i can't remember what tournament it was there was a tournament a couple I think it was a month ago and one of the guys was making a run and I think he said he spent twenty five hundred dollars in fuel just during the tournament days because he was running so far from the la the launch to his spot. And like you take that, you take the like five thousand dollar entry fees That's and all insane. this, and then you got a place you know, <laughs> X to even break even, and then you're trying to pay your bills on it. And some of these tournaments like you only have one elite series of in a month or you know, like it's almost a month by the time the next one comes around. It's, I, it, it shocks me. So many people still do it and still like have that strive to be a professional bass boat fisherman because 
I mean, that's a different kind of freaking grind. Uh, I love it too. You you just have to have that kind of career that allows you to get away f- for that <clears throat> long, you know? Oh if, yeah. If, yeah. If you don't that's have the vacation time long. and you're not, yeah, you're not set up like, you know, like me, I'd love to chase more national stuff, but 18 with my new job, I got 18 vacation days and the family takes at least five or six. So. Exactly. You know. And it's, I mean, it's hard to beat compete with people that, have that schedule where they can go pre-fish however much in advance or spend X amount of time on the water. You know, it's, there's just so much that they are going to get in that time that you're not, I mean, some people just got it. Like you can just show up to a body of water and figure it out. But I mean, that's like one in 10, if not like one in 50. And like, like I know about some of the anglers when we went to Florida, we had two days to figure Florida out. Neither me or Brian had ever been there. And the weather was the worst they'd seen in 20 years for winter weather in January. Well, the people that were there for two weeks had it dialed in. Of course they did. I can figure out anybody or water in two weeks. Like I had two days. That that, that, that's, that's really one of the things I like about the bass trail is off limits. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think with Hobie being as big as they are, they need to do it the same deal. The three days of practice that, that evens it out a lot. I agree. Yeah. I, I think that that, I think it would be cool because I was thinking about this. I just had to figure out the off limits times for our state championship and a little bit of a different situation here. We have a lake inbounds and then there's a float on the lower Coosa river. So you definitely want to give guys time to check it out. The float. Cause I mean, floats can be dangerous and tricky and hard, but you also don't want them burning up the fish because it's one big long float. You're going to have a lot of the field fish it. So, you know, you don't want it to you know kind of ruin before it has a chance to show out, but you don't want to limit your guys going to the lake. Cause you're going to need a couple of days to figure the lake out. And, you know, so it's a, it's a little bit of a headache. No, Dan's got it figured out. Dan doesn't need any time. I'm not going to the lake. You going to do the float lake. this year? No, I'm not doing either. Fuck both of them. <laughs> I forgot you got the KFL championships or playoffs or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Playoffs. Well, the great news about how playoffs. I changed up the format uh, formatting for the state championship is it won't be there next year. So, yeah, that was like the rule I kind of made was whatever the state championship is one year, you can't do it again the next. So, because we had a lot of guys, I mean, everybody likes doing it, but it was like four or five years in a row. It never changes. Yeah, same place, and, and it's and, hard to beat the locals down there. The locals are good, yeah. like, and that's like uh, it's it's a river place. You have a, I, I know it's I sound like a broken record. You have a river and a lake. If you fish the lake, you're a sucker. You can't win. <laughs> so it's like you have to. The river just has bigger spots. You you have to go fish it. So yeah, and that that that's just not my jam. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to mix it up from here on out. You know, bring it up to the Tennessee Valley. I think it'd be cool to do it on Smith Lake, um, Lake Martin, which I don't. Lake Martin's cool. Logan Martin. I don't know about Neely Henry. I don't really like that one, but I like it better now. Now that yeah. I know it, <laughs> yeah. But I like Logan Martin. The yeah. Logan Martin was fun, man. <laughs> if I had known how to net a fucking fish on a five foot leader on a Carolina rig, I could have topped twenty that tournament. But I wish I had GoPro'd that event and people yeah. could see me struggling with that Greg Blanchard special net, which there's nothing wrong with, but you need a handle this long if you're going to be throwing a five-foot leader. Because you'd reel that Carolina uh, the weight up to the tip of the rod, which you should not do. But I was panicking because I'd have like a 17, 18-inch spot on, and I'm just like, ah! I could have handlined it, but it was terrible. It was so bad. But... Yeah. My whole plan worked. I was getting the fish. I just couldn't get them in the boat. But And then the storms rolled through, and it sucked. But I don't want to open up that wound. I'd rather talk yeah. about all of Garrett's problems. It hurts. I, yeah. I, I said before, <laughs> that, if, if, if the tournament would have been the day before, me and Lambert were doing a, a float that either one of us could have won it. And yeah. they opened up the floodgates, and for some reason that killed the bite where we were at. So, But we were freaking on them. <laughs> like... Like I'm telling my whole family, I'm going to win this some bitch. <laughs> y'all be at the way in. I got something to yeah, show y'all. Exactly. It's and all you got was a truck key. Martin. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever get him his key back? Yeah, I eventually got it to him. It only took two years. 
but uh yeah i i think that uh next year i'm probably going to do a little bit of the same thing and just kind of dabble around with whatever comes close like garrett said i still want to do i mean obviously del hollow is going to be fun um i hope that one of the big ones goes back to lacrosse just to give me an excuse to go up to lacrosse garrett you need to go to lacrosse it's sick that's one of my favorite places i ever fished that's like brad's backyard full of uh vacation days like next year's but i plan on burning them on something like that yeah if they do that again i'd like i like really like to do that too where i fish it and then my family flies up and we go to like wisconsin dills and you know, a bunch of other stuff up there. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I would definitely say fly up. Me and my wife drove out, which was fantastic. It was super fun, but I was so focused on making sure she had a good time. Because, we I mean, neither one of us had ever been there. I didn't want her having to run around lacrosse by herself. That just seems like you're being a shitty husband. Also, while a college a professional it's a college town. She'll be oh, fine. Really? I'm sure she would have been. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we found good eats and good drinks, and I kind of forgot to pre-fish. I mean, I kind of pre-fished one day. But yeah, I shot myself. I shoot myself in the foot so much. But that's what I'm saying. Like this year, I took way more casual than even that, and it's, everything seemed to work better around here. So, are you just are you doing anything big, Brad, or do you think you're gonna? I mean, as like a I don't want to say progressing angler. I mean, you obviously can fish, and everybody knows that. We're just picking. Like with you having so much success this year locally, do you do you think you would want to dabble in any of the bigger stuff or follow a trail or? It's hard to say at this point I'm up in there. Um, it depends right now. I'm currently working with my pup. Um, she's not a pup. She's 10. I rescued her. She doesn't like other dogs. So we're working through that right now being a rescue. She's got some dog fear. If I can work through that, there'll be a puppy in my future and tournament angling is pretty much done because I'm first and foremost, a dog trainer before I am a fisherman. Like my true passion is training, hunting dogs. I love it. It's something I truly enjoy to do. Um, if the dog gets held off another year, I might chase something, um, maybe regional do like something around the regional side. I don't know if I want to chase anything on the national level, but maybe something regional regional or like if you were, I'd say the all American kayak series, because they hit a bunch of the good waters up around, you know, the Midwest. And I think that'd be, they run a killer trail, man. Everybody, everybody likes it. I think that it's a trail that, will be in i don't want to say contention like there's like a trophy at the end of it or something but just one of the big ones you hear about just like the big three um also that would be what i would today, that, fish yeah yeah that, that there's going to be one on lake of the ozarks i forget who's uh eco pro something or another but it's like guaranteed first place 10 grand and the guaranteed big bass is 10 grand it's later this year man you talk about a one fish yeah, that's a, right. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of excited about our state championship. Uh, they're giving me uh, the city of Wetumpka has given me five hundred dollars for to give out for big fish. So, I mean, five hundred dollar big fish. Woo! On top of you know, we'll have more big fish pot from the entry fee. But I can't imagine a ten thousand dollar fish like sheep. I don't, I can't like, I can't wrap my head around like that feeling of when you catch that fish, you're like, boom, bank. I'd freak yeah. out. I don't know. Like, I don't know uh, if I could read focus after like, that. Yeah. I <laughs> used to fish the Oakley big bass. One big fish. <laughs> yeah. I used to fish the Oakley big bass out of my boat on Smith Mountain. And I, and I done really well. And, uh, uh one year I, it was a, I was just going down a riprap bank, just like I was looking for bedded fish. It was late April and there were still a lot of bedders. And I see this giant right up on the bank and I flip a beaver right over there and don't scare it. Man, it goes down, eats it. And dude, I set the hook and I mean, I thought when I netted this fish, I laid down in the boat. I'm like, <laughs> I just won a new boat. You know what I'm saying? Because it looked like a seven or eight pounder. I mean, I don't know back then what the length was on it. But I pick it up out of the net, and it is, like, so skinny. And I'm like, you kidding me. You know, it just spawned out. And mm. I, it weighed, like, five pounds. I, I got second in an hour or something like that. Go go find a bunch of crawfish or something and start feeding it. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> I have, day, you know, you yeah. caught that fish two weeks ago. It would have been a giant. It it's probably would have won it. It doesn't say in the rules. You, you says you can't catch it with crawfish. It doesn't say I can't feed that bitch crawfish. <laughs> yeah. Like, he was lethargic. I just helped him out. Like, 
Yeah. It's just no, I'm, some treats. I'm a product of like, I, I bet you all of my big fish have all came spawned out. So like my big fish is 23 or 23 and a quarter. I can't remember. And it was seven, two. And it still wasn't really that like, it was just basically still flat. Like, caught it in the dead heat of the summer on a little grass patch and like you you sit and you're like well this is awesome from the kayak standpoint and it's a great looking fish but shit what did it look like a few months ago like yeah, yeah. that's a, that's the thing with the south you know you got the length but then the weight they just uh, the bass don't look as healthy you know that, that, like they definitely go way more lethargic in the south than you see anywhere else yeah and that's why the fishing i guess during the summer gets so tough you know summer and late fall you go north and it's like, man, it's a feed fest. You know, yeah, me and me and, uh, and they're thick. You never and, catch skinny bass up north. Me and Gary definitely put that, you know, the whole like this like pre transition period, uh, summer to fall to test on Pickwick last weekend, and it's it's different because like he he made a good point. So like a lot of people know, and if you read into it, like your summer to fall transition when the fish start schooling up and getting back in the creeks and stuff like that. Well, that's probably true on most places, but the Tennessee River they draw the lakes down so much, especially Pickwick, that like most of the creeks aren't even in play anymore. There's no water in them, so yeah. the fish don't really migrate back there. And uh, we confirmed all those suspicions this week. We found resident fish, but. I found one good, I found a, I showed it to him. I caught a 19 and something spot that was probably right around four pounds that as the toughest spot I've ever reeled. I thought I had a drum because I had my drag all but locked down and he was peeling it off the reel. That was I was like, fish. I got him foul hooked or something and he jumped and I freaked out and I was like, ah! and then I reeled it in and it's like this big old football and it had a, you know, had the rough tongue and I was like, and it's a spot. Hell yeah, I love catching spots, man. Like, yeah, me too. It was, and that's not what you expect to catch on Pickwick. We're out there looking for big, stupid, largemouth and smallies that may be dumb enough to come up shallow on that end of the lake. And everything, not, not a lot of places you can go and get the slam and catch all three, but Pickwick's Tennessee yeah. River, yeah. Pickwick, man, Gunnersville at the right time of the year. Slam. You can do it yeah. on yeah, Wheeler that's the pretty quality. easily. They got really quality there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I still want to catch a real big main lake smallie on Pickwick. I've never done it. Um, get Dan's helped me like kind of start to put the pieces of the puzzle together for that kind of fishing. Uh, I just didn't do it this year. We ah, we tried. We went out there in a bass boat on the during the Elite Series, and I mean, obviously, we didn't get to get on the ledges because we were trying not to get in their way. But we caught a bunch of fish. We caught a slam that day. Uh, Caught good smallmouth on a crankbait. Caught largemouth back in the creeks. I mean, I mean and obviously spots because that's where you're going to find them. But it was cool. When we averaged our, we put our scores together, we beat like half the elites. It was kind of a good day for us. You know, we're, we're kind of a big deal. Might as well go pro, man. Ah, I'm just looking for sponsors. Uh, Garrett, <laughs> if I can have half of what Garrett spends on tackle a season, I could yeah. cover all of my entry fees. And that is not an exaggeration. I can uh, cover the. What's up, big money? Dude. <laughs> no, I hit just, him uh, up at the beginning of, and I'm not trying to put his business out there. It was like right after, right during the spring. Uh, my man got picked up. He works with Yoziri, and he ordered like one of everything they have. <laughs> and this box shows up that's like four foot by a foot, packed to the rim with everything, all nice. And I was like, I'm just curious because I talked to him all the time. I was like, What have you spent on tackle this year? And he was like. It's a little north of like $4,000. And I was like, is that rods and reels? He's like, no. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I do all my spending in the beginning of the year. So I'd like. Dude, he's lying. Throughout the year. He texted me the other day. He's like, I, I grabbed a couple new rods to try. You know, it's a brand <laughs> yeah. I hadn't really heard of, but they look pretty good. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, yeah, they were only $300 a piece. I was like, oh, no, who no does beat. that? What were they? <laughs> Uh, I got sold on that freaking targeting ad or Instagram stuff. Uh, but it's, I think it's called Trica. Uh, hmm. they're from, no, I'll north, admit, I guess. yeah, that's I've, one of the I've, lightest rods I've, I've ever it, held, yeah. and he loved them when he was using them. Yeah, it was, they're, they're really nice. I, I, I enjoy them. They got like and those it, uh, full carbon grips on them. And he, um, he fishes with Mega Bass Levantes, so he fishes with high end shit, and then he tries these out and likes them. So. I just don't got that kind of budget. 
Like I, I, I think I, I mean I got some high end stuff and some of my Dobbins and some of my reels, and then I pick his shit up, and I'm like, shit. And now I can't afford that ball ballpark. Uh, that's that's where I went wrong. I picked one up one time and fished with it, and I was like, I can't go back now. I'm done for. <laughs> I know if, if if you like the real light stuff, my, my buddy Chuck, he uses the uh, Phoenix Feather. He's Ooh, really yeah, into that. Good things about that one. Yeah. I got 50 bucks, says he'll have one ordered before morning. <clears throat> yeah, I got it pulled up in my tackle warehouse right now. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be in surprised. The cart. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't say that's a good rod. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give it a try. With Never you, with, with how you like trying gear and stuff, because I mean he does. Dude. He's a we're all gear horse. Gary just gets to do it more than the rest of us, or some of us. I'm surprised you have you you hadn't ended up with any G Loomis rods. Everybody knows G Loomis makes good shit. Yeah, uh, I just haven't gone that far off the deep end with the <laughs> with the six and seven hundred dollar rod range. Yeah. That's a, it's coming. But, I don't know. He just got married. It may not be coming. So what kind of rods you into, Mark? Do you have a brand? Uh, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I I, I, I like uh, the Dobbins. I got some uh, Champion XPs now. They're really, really good. And I've got, yeah. like, my jig rods, uh, uh, St. Croix Legend. I just, man, I'm a hoarder. I, um, <laughs> I've been catching fish off of spinnerbait a lot lately. And um, I got a 6.6 six Quadum I paid $30 for 15 years ago. <laughs> It's yeah, medium broke, heavy yeah. and I, it's missing an eye and I use it every week. Yeah. That's the way I Check feel out about the, the old uh, all-star rods. Yeah. I, I like the old all-star I suits. finally sold my last like early 2000s model all-star rod. and yeah, Like maroon ones? Yeah. It was a 6.6 six medium heavy mod. God, I missed that rod. But it, like when I got back into the fishing game, 6.6 six was a long when I first started fishing and now everybody's yeah. like, well, if it's not seven foot 11, it ain't. I'm like, what? Well, that's like the real pit, ratios. Yeah, the pistol grip too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I'm old school. I, I still remember when quantum come out with the six, three burner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was a Man. burner back in the day. And like, I still throw a lot of six to three, six ratio reels. And you know, everybody's saying that's slow speed now, you know? Yeah, I can't throw anything under like a seven five now. Like I have to have. I've it. got one six three I use for top water or uh, like crankbaits. Like, I like I like a slow reel on shallow crankbaits because I I don't know why I feel yeah. like I can just feel it really go nuts. I honestly got four or five something reels. Jesus! Oh my god! I bet you've got wrist problems like carpal tunnel or something. I do. <laughs> hey, hey Mark, if if you need a spinnerbait rod, check out the. Falcon head turner. It's like their 610 spinner yeah, 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 yeah. Bait rod. I mean, they have it both the expert and the the yeah, yeah. I I've, I mean I've really yeah. looked up to it and then I had a, a local guy build one that I I like it and I've been using it, but because I actually have like this weekend, that's what I want on the spinner bait. Yeah. And um man, I can't give up all the juice, you know what I'm saying? But I'm throwing oh, a yeah. bigger spinner bait than than everybody else. Yeah. So it gets deeper, and the fish just ain't seeing the bait. You know what I'm saying? And it's That's stupid. A, that it's and, it's the best spinnerbait rod I've ever owned. Like easy. I can't wait to try the. Uh, I'm gonna pick up one of uh, Russ Snyder's rods. His uh, Snyder Sniper. Snipers. Snipers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. I guarantee you, it's probably a killer. Like, and I, you talk about like, you know, I'm a I'm a gear whore too. I work with Dobbins, and I love their stuff. Um, I did realize that I like am very thin on backup rods as of late. And uh, my buddy told me Academy had this crazy clearance still going on. And uh, they had the H2O Express, which is their brand. Um, they're called the TAC 40s, which is Stetson Blaylock's models. They're uh, one piece graphite with full one piece carbon blanks and real or carbon bases and real seats. And with all the sales and discounts, I got them for $28 a piece. Wow. And, and like they felt good like they actually had a seven six uh mag heavy yeah and i was like hey back up frog rod <laughs> and uh it felt like a broomstick so i can't wait to i also i feel like you don't need a really expensive rod for a frog rod I mean, so I, it's I funny nice. <laughs> my, my first ever fraud rod, frog rod was one of the camo h2o expresses and that rod 
I've given away and the guy still uses that rod's probably seven years old and <laughs> caught a ton of fish in thick Gunnersville grass and Wheeler swamps and it will not die. And that's why I was kind of okay with, you know, $28 a piece. It was like backup rods, rods for friends. You know, like right now I broke one of my frog rods, Dobbins. There's nothing they did wrong. I let it get down. The tip sank down in the grass at Gunnersville and I tried to snatch it through the grass and I snapped it in half. Cause I'm a dumbass, and uh, you know, I'm waiting to go do the warranty claim. I just haven't had time. And we were at Academy today after dinner and I saw that. I was like, hmm, that'll work for a couple days. So but there's there's some things like a spinner bait, man. Just a medium heavy works for me. I don't yeah, that's yeah, that's what I throw a spinner bait I on. I mean, it, it, it ain't specific for me, you know what I'm saying? But now when I go cranking yeah. or a Ned rig or Actually, shaky head, a jig. I'm I get Pacific. You know what I'm saying? With the spinner bait, I'm kind of not. Only I'm one I get with the spinner bait. I, I like it on a longer, softer rod. Okay, he is specific on everything. Hit man carries twelve rods with him, and every one of those bitches has a mission and has been selected specifically <laughs> for that mission. Actually, I I have sometimes like when I travel, when I go to Pitquick, I'll have twenty rods in my boat. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Really? That's why I like well, he, them. He has a Titan. Titan. Yeah, oh, dude. Yeah. You, it's got, dude, you got so much room in that thing, dude. Brad, how many rods do you carry when you fish? Like four? Six. Six. <laughs> Simple. Yeah, six. How about you, Dan? I try to only, in the Hobie, I try to only carry six. I but, because I, I, can go, I can go horizontal and then I don't have to worry about them sticking up. But I mean, I can carry like, 12 plus you know and yeah. sometimes if i'm fishing offshore where it's like going shallow and deep sometimes i will but if i'm especially if i know i'm going shallow i try to just carry six so then i don't have any standing up yeah that's one I, thing i i hate about carrying a lot of rods is i can have five comfortably laying down in the unlimited and then i'll have the rest stand behind me but i uh Actually, I didn't tell Garrett about this when we were fishing this weekend. I went back up in the little secluded area that had a lot of low hangers. And you always hear your rod tips touching, but I don't ever pay any attention to it. I fished the area, turned around and came back and my spinning rod was hanging from the tree. And all you could see was this much of the rod. And it, it hadn't knotted up. It had one piece of one braid wrapped around one twig one time and it was holding it. And it was a nine foot hole. I'd never seen it. And there was a foot of the rod sticking up. And I was like, oh. And I'm glad that one didn't have a savior device on it because it would have, I mean, it have helped if it had fallen, but then you got to replace that again. I but. put a couple of those deals on whenever I've had my old town and the, the flush mount rod holders, there's nowhere for them to drain. So they filled up with water and I put my savior in there and boom, it popped. And it's like, well, <laughs> they changed don't that work for me. Your rod out. Yeah, yeah. They changed that with the newer ones. Um, <laughs> But I have a couple of the old ones from like Dobbins rods I bought used. And that happened actually the last time me and Garrett fished as I set one in and I turned and I heard boop. And I was like, what was that? And it just shot and it was in the rod holder that's angled back. So it just like, and I got lucky in the, the little <laughs> foam thing had wedged into the rod tube. But the, cause I didn't see the rod. I was like, what was that noise? And then you see that bright yellow braid. And I was like, oh. Son of a bitch. So, and I still haven't replaced it. I fished it all weekend with just a screw hanging out of the bottom of it. I don't care. It'll be all right. Yeah. But, yeah. Don't ever think it. Uh, you're one to talk, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Don't overthink it. My I, A lot of my rods, I've went to, uh, maybe this is just me, but I have a lot of, I went up a power on a lot of my rods because I felt like I wasn't getting enough of a hook set from a kayak going from a boat to a kayak. So a lot yeah. of my stuff, if, if it used to be medium heavy, I went to a heavy. Between Just the, me. No, no. Garrett uh, has kind of shown me that. And then a, a good buddy of mine local here, Spencer, um, the rods I'm using for my heavy frog and he uses for everything around here. And can turn or like can school me on it and like i'm missing bites or losing fish and he's not and um uh, he actually the that last tournament i got in i kind of did that i swapped everything up and went a little bit heavier on each of my setups even like i try not to go heavy on 
like treble hook baits, like a plopper. Yeah. And he talked me into going up one. So I swap. I actually traded my plopper and square, uh, not square bill, my uh, plopper and chatterbait rods just to see what happened. And dude, I wrecked them. And so it's like your whole theory. And especially with Dobbins, it's like it tells you what they're good for. Like this is yeah. what baits work best on it. And I still didn't go by that. And they worked even better. So it's just also good. like uh, like longer rods out of a kayak. Um, yeah, I, just I feel really like, like long work rods too. Yeah, like you get better casting Cast. distance because yeah. you're sitting down and better hook sets on like those longer casts because you can take up more line with that longer rod. That's what I'm going to experiment yeah. with this uh, seven six. My frog rods are seven threes, but I I can send that frog you know, into outer space. And I've yeah. noticed like, I'm, I say it all the time. I'll throw it far out there. It hits the water. I'm like, I'm going to be in trouble if I get bit and I turn around and get bit and <laughs> don't have that backbone. So that's why I'm basically using this cheap rod to give a longer rod a chance on these bombing casts to see if it changes that hookup ratio or not. What was you going to say, Dan? No, I'm, I'm just really surprised. Somebody hasn't made like a real, real you know kayak specific line of rods that are you know i don't know I, well I think somebody a, didn't bonafide just come out with rods yak rods or well, some there, shit like well there are yak rods i mean there are some things yeah other people have got some. yeah 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 i think croy's got uh, some all of them make it's like basically their, their, their short rod rods. with a shorter handle yeah. yeah which doesn't to me change in, why do you need a shorter handle in a kayak I like a shorter handle. I mean, I think, yeah, I, just, I, do I don't like a shorter rod. Yeah. I, yeah. The longer handle could hit your vest and stuff. You know what I'm I, saying? I, it's just, I, and it yeah. could just be how I, like how I hold the rod when I do it. I like for it to rest like right in here. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, with a spinning rod, I have a lot of like straight up hook sets, which that doesn't change anything to me with that length. Um, because I over grip it real bad. And, uh, I mean, it's kind of like using a cane pole at that point. As long as you're holding it, it's all fine. But like when I do bait casters, I always set to the, to a corner, you know, whether it's set that way or set this way. And I like to have, because like as it sets and it pulls back against you, that rod's usually laying on my forearm. And that's some of the rods I looked at that were on sale today were really short. And like you put them in your hand. I mean, they were you're talking like mid forearm. And I was like, I have no leverage on a rod like that. Like, hmm. I you get in the thick shit that I fish, down. you need to be able to let the dogs out. Yeah, he's freaking out. That's a coconut. He just barks at everything. <laughs> <laughs> Something moves. <laughs> he's a great Pyrenees, so he's like he's super got big bark too. Yeah. Mm. My my uh, we, we named my dog Topper because he whenever you take him for a walk, he always shits on top of stuff. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Like he literally puts his top, his poop on top of things. Like if it, whatever it is, like if it'll be like, you'll have an entire field and he'll find the one piece of monkey grass or something that's yeah. up a little bit higher and shit on top of that. That if That's just common. Like I, I trap and coyotes and bobcats and all that's the way they do it. Really? Yeah. Uh, we, they want to see, uh... they want to be seen. It's like marking territory sort of deal. You gotta, you gotta show yeah, up there. My beat. shit's on top. <laughs> <laughs> my shit's on top. <laughs> All right. I one of y'all believe on that. that go in there and shit on your toilet seat and see if his wife <laughs> yeah. beats the shit out of them first. <laughs> go upper deck. Theory behind Amber turds. Shit yeah. <laughs> yeah, shit on the bed. <laughs> Mine. He called that shit a grumpy. <laughs> He's like, she took a grumpy. <laughs> that got me. I love how people were like challenging that it was like dog versus human. And he was like, you can, you can tell the difference folks. Like huge difference. We have a Chihuahua. She's yeah. a grown woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, getting into the closing thoughts, Brad, we'll start with you. Uh, what what you looking for? You got coming up? You gonna try to hit some tails again, or? Oh, uh, starting to get the dog. Back, I keep the dog in shape, but really getting the dog back in shape. I was invited to be a guide for the Rough Grouse Society's Grouse Camp in Eagle River, Wisconsin this year, so I'll be guiding two awesome. rookie hunters up there during grouse their um, 
grouse camp. So I'm really excited for that. And that really is the start to my grouse season, which I'm up north four of the five next weekends after that chasing grouse. So I want to do that so bad. Plug the show too, man. Oh yeah, well yeah, I just recorded tonight. Yeah, we got Feather and Fur. I'm the host, one of the Paddle and Fin shows. Bi weekly. My show epi- my show airs Saturdays and my next episode's this coming Saturday on what is that, like the seventeenth? Whatever Maybe. it's up to be. Sounds right. Did I pull 13, that? Yeah, seventeenth. Look at yeah. that. Well, that's awesome. It's coming Ooh. up. No, he the, he gets a bunch of cool guests on, and they covered just a little bit of everything. I need you. I don't know how you would play it into kayak hunting because you'd never get one on a kayak. It'd be badass if you could get like an elk hunter that some random because like people think elk, they think out west, but there's elk hunters in Kentucky and Tennessee and stuff where there is a lot of these little backwaters. Like, and, and the elk aren't as giant as the Roosevelts and stuff like that. It'd be really cool to find out somebody's like packed one out with a kayak. Mm-hmm. You should research probably that. know who to talk to to start on that conversation. So that would, I think that would just be sick, especially if they got pictures of like a five by five plus just rack <laughs> hanging off of a freaking kayak. That'd be sick. <laughs> I don't think an elk's going to fit on their kayak. I'd yeah, be, I bet you I could get one movie. on that unlimited. You can get Ooh. pieces of it, but I mean, <laughs> we're going to find out about that weight limit on that thing. <laughs> yeah. I've been around some dead elk. They're really big. Yeah. 600 pounds of meat. It's a whole lot just of animal. Load, just just get a tow kayak just specifically for the yeah. meat. I think That's Everett that. Park, he's he's killed some nice deer on you know. Oh yeah. Nice Ever, Everett's Everett's done a bunch. Uh Parker McDonald's got some gorgeous bucks using the using the canoe as well. Just some is he one gorgeous. of the um no, that's not him. The what are the urban hunter guys called? I can't think of their freaking name. Seek one. Uh, Seek Public. one. Yeah. Seek, yeah. yeah. And then what's the yeah what's the one you're talking about, Brad? Uh, the other guys, they're uh... chasing pu- public something. Yeah, hunting public. I, hunt, the yeah. Hunting hunting public. public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys are those cool. guys are really kick ass. They've got some really good videos on uh, saddle hunting too. Since we talked about that at the beginning, but that is those because Garrett, I think, is the one that told me about that, or maybe it was Waylon. Fuck, I can't remember. I talked to too many people about <laughs> yes. too much shit. I doubt. But uh, Mark. Everything. <laughs> Closing thoughts, man. What you got coming up? What you excited for? Anything? I'm really, really busy. I mean, this past weekend I fished a two day championship Mountain State. This weekend coming up, I got a SVKA event, and that'll be the last. You know, they got a championship after that. So next weekend I got that tournament, or this weekend coming up, and then I got the West Virginia Kayak Anglers Championship, and I'm leading the angler year of that. So I need to do good in that championship, and it's a two-day tournament. And then the week after that, I got Bassmaster. I'm second in angler year of that on Pickwick. And then I, uh, I'll hook you up, buddy. Yeah, well, I'm I'm good. I, I fished Pickwick a few times. I'm really excited about it. I'm I'm really I'll confident. Take that information but, you're uh, giving out, Dan. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't that. I can't fish it. So it's it's hard for people to catch other people's fish you know what i'm saying yeah i'm a loner i like finding my own fish kind of deal and i and i think i gotta know what's going to happen i do a lot of research and i don't know i got a good good idea a good plan but i don't think i'm gonna fish kbf national championship i didn't fish it last year and i, I don't know i'm just not excited about the venues you know kentucky lake i, I mean i, I really think kentucky not lake i mean could be good especially from the kayak standpoint. I know a bunch of folks that still fish it that have phenomenal trips out there. So like, yes, Kentucky Lake's doing a lot worse than it used to, but it's also from our side of the world, we're accessing stuff a lot different. I mean, some people, some people yeah. are still out there. Well, the, uh, KBF had a two day, you know, they had a trail last year and, it, you know, they're two different tournaments, two days and Casey Reed and, you know, me and Casey talk all the time and, I don't think he caught but like one or two fish in the whole week or something. I mean, that boy can catch fish, you know what Last I'm saying? Time, and uh, and he, then Jody and them, I mean, Matt Ball. I mean, I fished against Matt Ball this weekend. I mean, yeah, I, you know, we went out there kind of on a whim two years ago. And, I mean, me, Brian, and Jay just were goofing off and stumbled into a bunch. I mean, we all we caught was smallmouth. I don't think we caught anything else. And it, 
I don't know. I just think that it could be like, I'm not pro KBF or nothing. I, I like different areas I haven't been to, and it's cool to go to like historically good lakes and shit like that. Um, and we did a show on it last week, like talking about how they've opened it up, which I think is cool because it's going to be money for the winter. Like if 400 people show up, you know. And, yeah, it's an open. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like open championship. That's what I think they should call it. But uh, I don't know. It'll... It'll be cool to see how it plays out. I, was talking I, to I hope they get a going. bunch of people. I really do. I hope it works yeah. out. I mean, you know, I'd want maybe next year to fish a wheeler. I really like wheeler. I'll fish the that. next one just because it's in my it's 10 minutes from my house straight. Well, there. wheeler at the wild card, I was at the first day, I think I was in 20th place out of 300. And, you know, it was the boat draw. You know, I was co angler deal. And the next day, that's why I quit doing co angler, man. <laughs> The next, like, as soon as you get off stage, you meet uh, your next partner. You know what I'm saying? Because your boat numbers are, you just, like, switch one place or something. And um, so I meet my next day's partner, and he caught, like, one fish. And he said, how would you do? And, like, I just weighed in. I was, like, seventh place or something. And he's like, oh, man, you caught him. He said, we're not going to go far tomorrow. We're, you know, I'm not going to put no gas in it. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, I'm serious. We, we went straight to a bridge, like, you know, right there in town. And there were like seven boats. There were two or three broke down. <laughs> it just sucked. I was catching one of Carolina rig, and I ended up catching a drum, man. Like, you know, it made my heart stop. It was a Wheeler big Lake drum. Wheeler smallmouth, man. I thought this is the one, you know, because I only had like five or six pounds. It was fall, you know, it sucked, you know. And you was catching one-pound keepers. I but my buddy, actually, a, you know, a local boy that I ended up fishing with, uh, he finished second and had like maybe 14 pounds the second day or something. I, was crazy. I, I know we've Lost got some buddies. Uh, I had a buddy post night before last. Uh, he does night tournaments on Wheeler all the time. And we had, it was the night me and Garrett got back. I didn't even, I meant to send it to you. We struggled and he went out on Wheeler and that's a three fish night tournament. And he had like 15 and he had one six pound smallmouth on Wheeler right now. Um, KBF, a couple was it last year? I think I fished Pickwick and um, I think Wheeler won it, maybe. That was it was two years ago, and that was uh, yeah, it was two years was, ago. Yeah, that was Drew and uh, what's Drew's buddy's name that he does the show with? Oh, uh, Morris Ken, Ken, yeah, Dr. they won his water, they won two to. But yeah, I always heard that Wheeler sucked, you know, that it got went downhill and stuff, but it seems like in backwaters was like really sneaky big. It's it's definitely down from what its history. Yeah. And it fish is small. So the backwaters are on fire, but it's like you find a backwater that is on fire and then the rest of them will suck that week and then it like moves. Uh-huh. Uh the our our club just had their classic there last weekend and I think there were only two fish caught in the twenties. Like it was tough, but there was a bunch, and, but a lot of these guys get like stupid way up in the skinny water, catching like Creek smallies and stuff like John that. John Cox. Yes. John he Cox. He jumping is, logs and stuff. I don't know if you oh, see his Instagram story. Did y'all see his Instagram story today? No, I didn't see it today. He was filming with maybe tackle warehouse or something, some new Berkeley baits. And he was down there in Florida and dude, he is nuts, man. He's, he's oh, actually, I when I did well at the classic, like when I went to go back to my truck, I got to ride with him and Ray Hanselman, like to get back to my vehicle. You know, they just come off the classic stage, and that was probably one of my highlights. You know, I, I was just stuck in a truck with them for 45 minutes and listening to them talk, you know, how their day went and all this. But John Cox is the he's just totally awesome, dude. He's he was the reason like, I feel like that I can be a good angler, like because dude, he was interested he just in the kayak shallow. trophy. He was like, "What you, what you win, dude?" He said, "I'll oh, second. That ain't bad." Which kayak? He said, "Cool. How much it cost to enter?" I'll tell you I mean, right that's the now, way John Cox like, is. Dude, he, he would get in one, I believe. Yeah, John know. Cox I mean, is I'm not the guy who would get jump in, in our one. national trail. John Cox yeah. would get in a kayak, get further than he can get in his boat, and fucking royally screw the rest of our world up. <laughs> like he'd be like. So wait, if I fish all these trails, it only costs me this amount of money. Exactly. And I can win this amount of money. That's what he. <laughs> that's what he said. He said, "Oh, that's all you paid, and you won that much." 
That's exactly what he said. He was like, wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. I mean, uh, to him, he's like, because he's all about that, you know. And it... uh, you know how I would feel like if I come around the corner in one of my honey holes on Wheeler, and John Cox is back there in a kayak, drug up on the <laughs> bank. I'm like, oh no! I'm like, cool that I was in the right area, but I don't have a chance in hell anymore. Thanks, guys. That's yeah, awesome. he, he, he's he's totally awesome, man. He, he but drew, anyway, he, he went true. They were in Florida, and, and he just went right across a grass flat, dude. Like. There was no, wow. it didn't even look like water, and he's just wide open, dude. Sending it. <laughs> Aluminum boats for the wind. And then all of a sudden, you know, there he is back in a lake, and I'm like, holy crap. He's proof that your uh, map study pays off. Because he said it in the 2016 one that he won on Wheeler. He was like, I just like to find areas that are like fishing ponds. It just makes it easier. Yeah. And, and that's like, what Drew Gregory's done. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, nothing against that. I mean, it's, and you put in a lot of effort like that. You know, I, I've done it here at the house. So. Oh, yeah, it's not rough easy. areas. Because really, that, that's a key is is finding fish that ain't pressured. Yeah, They're dumb. Fish. They're dumb. I like dumb fish. We all do. <laughs> all right. Come on. Well, Garrett, Garrett real, real quick, Garrett, what's uh, your closing thoughts? What are you looking forward to? Uh, well, i got <laughs> Kentucky Lake and Pickwick coming up. Uh, so I think I'm going to be on Kentucky Lake this weekend like, that we are just talking about it. Which but tournament is that for, for? It's for the cast uh, state championship. Uh, it'll be the weekend before the KBF. Gotcha. Uh, out there. So we'll be hammering their fish for them. There you go. And uh, then uh, you're going to do the Bassmaster on Pickwick? Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to. I'm still kind of on the fence about it, but I'm going to give it one more shot out there and see if I can find something I like. Uh, I wish I'd... about a hundred people would sign up. Yeah. I'm actually <laughs> surprised it. that there's not just for this one. Cause Pickwick's awesome. But I, w- I would, if I, if I hadn't just taken a new job, I'd be there. Yep. Well, uh, guys, I appreciate y'all coming on and just rambling yeah, on with y'all. us. It's been it's been fun. I like to change it up a little bit too. It makes it just a little more fun for us. Um, it's definitely but, a good time. Appreciate you having me on. I want to. I want to thank Brad Hicks for sticking it out. Oh wait, like he left for everybody that's <laughs> listening. On for everyone that can't see like the picture, Hicks left about an hour ago. Just so everyone yeah, knows, I'm going to call. Showed up. Showed up. Two out, words but... and dipped. <laughs> it's all good. We appreciate him coming on and chilling for a second and. I guess uh, Brad dropped the date for the Paddle and Finn event. So good job, Brad. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thanks to Matt for hopping in. Matt's always fun to talk to. Uh, but, yeah, thank, thank you, Brad, for coming on. And Garrett and Mark, you know, I hope you all both have a great, you know, the rest of y'all's fishing year. And hopefully we'll have you all back on, yeah, Mark, for an nice. AOI. And actually, Garrett, I'm, I'm hoping the with the way the season's working out, we'll have uh, be able to get, uh, the cast state championship covered on here too so don't oh, screw awesome. that up so we can have have you on <laughs> yeah. yeah i'll try my best <laughs> i believe Luckily, you. if that one's a five fish over a two-day span pretty much so hopefully oh, you got that. i can get it done on one day and screw up the next day and still be able to manage something <laughs> you better hope a riser didn't catch another 24 against you oh god yeah I still beat him. <laughs> hey there you go hang your hat <laughs> I beat yeah. Riser, and he called a donkey. And he killed 24. <laughs> well, all right, guys. Well, we appreciate it so much. We'll let y'all get to it. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we'll we see you next time. Yeah, thanks for having us on. All right. Yeah. Peace. See you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Fun show. A little different thing. I love just goofing off. I wish we just had a show that consistently was like that. Like one of our segments was just, you know, like bullshitting. Yeah. We, we take stuff too serious sometimes. Well, uh, real quick, we're going to get into the uh, tournament coverage. I got a bunch of them, so give me give me like five minutes. First up, we had the NACA tournament trail on Wheeler Lake in Huntsville, Alabama. 29 anglers. First place, Jason Moore with 91 and a quarter. Second place, Randall Wallace with 89 and a quarter. Third place, Michael Cooper with 87 inches. Uh, next up was the Socks and Cookies 6th Annual Nation Tournament. 35 anglers. Uh, first place, David Leslie with 104 and a quarter. Second place, uh, Wilton Rogerson with 98 and a half. Third place, Andrew Tweeten with 89 and a quarter. 
Next up, the Ontario Kayak Bass Trail on Sturgeon Lake. 107 anglers. First place, James Pendleton with 90 inches. Second place, Ian Hodgkins with 87. Third place, Nate Conley with 85 and three quarter. Nate's having a really good year. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic Kayak Bass Fishing on Goldsboro, which is part of the Susquehanna. 25 anglers, first place, James Pothering with 97. Second place, Matt Campbell with 96 and a half. Third place, Kevin, oh Lord, Pudelovich with 88 and a half. Next up was the uh, Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail on Piedmont Lake. 40 anglers, first place, Ed Shameen with 68. Second place, Tim Crabtree with 67 and three quarters. Third place, Dave Shar with 61. That was a five fish limit tournament and only first place and second place had limits. Uh, next up was the Mountain State Kayak Anglers uh, on the New River, Bluestone Lake, and Greenbrier River. 25 anglers, three fish limit. Uh, it was a two uh, separate bodies of water. You could use one pair. That's the one Mark was just on here talking about. Uh, his two-day total was 105 and a half. Second place, Mikey Holcomb with 105 and a quarter. So a narrow victory there. Third place, Brian McClung with 99 and three quarters. Uh, next up was uh, the Queen City Kayak Bass Fishing Trail on Lake Murray with 76, ang 76 anglers. First place, Chris Goodwin with 74 inches on their famous four fish limit. Second place, Jeremy Heath with 70 and a half. Third place, Chad Walden with 70 and a quarter. Next up's the San Antonio Kayak Fishing Trail on Lake Travis. 29 anglers. First place, Jeremiah Smith with 89 and a half. Second place, Ramon Flores with 82 and a half. And third place, Ot Shaw with 82 and a half as well. Uh, next up was the Badger State Kayak Championship on Green Lake, Wisconsin. Uh, is an invite-only event. 38 anglers. First place, Todd Martins with a two-day total of 165 and three quarters. Second place, Aiko Yvang with a 153 and three quarters. And third, uh, Pao Chow with 153 and a quarter. Next up was the Georgia Kayak Fishing League on the Okamog Okmo How do you say it? Okmulgi? I don't know. Come on, Mississippi. Help yeah. me out here. Okaboji. There we go. We'll go with that. 27 anglers. First place, Chris Kirkpatrick with 89 inches. Second place, Dylan Lowry with 86 and three quarters. Third place, Mike Watson with 81. Uh, moving on to the Moyak event on Bull Shoals with 67 anglers. First place, Tommy Probst with 87 inches. Second place, Chad Davison with 86. Third place, Lance Burris with 85 and a half. Uh, next up is the Idaho Kayak Bass Fishing Trail event on the CJ Strike Reservoir. 25 anglers, first place Kyle Zimke with 77 and three quarters, second place Troy Miller with 75 and three quarters, and third place Butch Delaney with 75 and a half. Just a couple left. Uh, Colorado Kayak Fishing Club uh, Boyd Bass Series, uh, 35 anglers, first place Alex Rojas with 81, second place Eric Alley with 80 and a half, and third place Josh Unger also with 80 and a half. And I'm going to screw this one all up. Next up was the Hobie Fishing European Championship two-day tournament in Italy. 68 anglers, five fish per day. Jonas Pesco with 373 centimeters. Second place, Luca Santin Santanini with 363 centimeters. And third place, Manon Rocher with 356 centimeters. So congrats to those guys. It's cool hearing about kayak tournaments going on all over the world. Congratulations to all the guys that kicked ass uh in all these closing events of the year and if your trails are still going because like we said earlier a lot of the northern trails are like mid towards the end of the year so uh great to get to talk about them and good job to all the winners and that's that right, dan go. got anything to close on brother that's it go kingfishers we have the King week Fisher. off for where the uh the first place in the south so we have the week off thanks for, for tuning in yep sorry but... <laughs> Just ready to finish out the season strong. So does your playoff start the week after that? No, it's the 24th and then the 8th. 24th and the 8th. How many rounds yeah. will it be for y'all that y'all fish if y'all like keep going? Like if you've well, been on out? It's This is wild card. 24th is the next round. The 8th would be the North and South Championships. And then I think it's October, whatever. 20 something is the championship one check. So that's it. Sweet. Well, good luck to y'all and hopefully y'all kick everybody's ass. Be nice to say that that's my co-host. <laughs> well, uh, we appreciate it again, guys. Uh, again, a little bit of different episode. We appreciate everybody hanging out with us as usual. Check on your fantasy stuff. The years are closing down. Tournament championships are coming up. Uh, if you haven't already saved the dates for our Del Hollow event for next year, it's coming up quick. Everybody have a 
great weekend and we'll see you next time peace later thanks for tuning in to another killer episode here on paddle and finn be sure to drop a five star rating a thumbs up or smash that subscribe button on any platform you're listening in on be sure to check us out on waypoint tv waypointtv.com Make sure you sign up for the Fantasy Kayak Fishing League at paddleandfin.com forward slash fantasy. You could support this show through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash paddleandfin. Don't forget to check out the website paddleandfin.com. Catch us on YouTube. If you got a question, comment, or want to see a future guest on the show, be sure to email us at paddleandfin at gmail.com. Shout out to our show supporters, Yak Gadget. You can check out all the fine kayak accessories at yakgadget.com. Pelican Professional. For all your cases, coolers, and lighting needs, go to pelican.com. Rocktown Adventures. Your Midwest premier paddle sports destination. Go to rocktownadventures.com. Eastport Marina. The beautiful destination on Dale Hollow Lake. If you're looking for lodging, kayaks, kayak accessories, or anything fishing related on the beautiful Dale Hollow Lake, go to eastport.info. And Jig Masters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and fill your tackle boxes today.